Come on, Danny. No waste time. There's work to be done. Christmas to the horses again. He's ready for Chelsea. Oh! Tonight's first Christmas movie, Season for Miracles. It's a good one. It's on at eight. If your homework's done. It will be. Tomorrow is a big work day. Remember, Dad, I've got my shoot for the yearbook in the morning. That's not gonna work. For school, I'm doing the class photos tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. I told you a long time ago. Danny, you can see for yourself the snow is going to add hours to picking up and bailing the trees. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you now. Well, you're going to have to call your teacher and postpone it. I'm going to need you all day. But this is important. So is this. You going to pay the bills? Hey! Come back here! He can see for himself. Not now. It's Bridget. What is it? I don't think he's too mad. I'm not hungry. It was a good movie. I've seen it. He just wants to get ready for New York. It's getting worse every year. He misses mom. It's just one day. It's not just one day. All right, it's the yearbook. There's a deadline. I'm gonna miss our talent recital during third period. It's not the same, Bridget. That yearbook is the kind of thing that looks good on a college resume. Well, maybe they'll let you do it anyway, another day. You don't understand the way things work. When's the pickup? Trucks will be here in a few hours. You're always late. No, the trees have to be completely loaded, ready to go by 9 a.m. tomorrow. So it's shake a leg. Good. Danny, come on. Hurry up before your sister's food gets cold. Thanks, Anna. Come on, Danny. So, you're just gonna sit here in silence? Well, gee, Dad, what, what do you want me to say? Hmm? How happy I am that I let down my friends on the yearbook staff? This is a working farm. And believe it or not, you're an essential part of how it works. The way you and Bridget have pitched in this year has made all the difference. And what about next year? And when do I get to decide what I want to do? When you get your priorities straight. This will all be yours one day, don't you get that? Mom would never let you do this. What did you say? Guess who won the talent recital at school? Luann Goretzky.
All set. Come on, Danny. out a Broadway show yet? I'll see anything with music. Bet you're ready for Mrs. Quinn's cooking. I can't wait. Yay, a real cook. Hey, without me you'd start. <laughs> Well, you know it's that time of year when the Byrne family hits town. Hello, Mrs. Quinn. Oh. How are you doing? Well, another year, another crop harvested. And this one, so tall I'm getting dizzy just looking at you. Hi. You're not too grown up for my cookies, I hope. No. <laughs> oh, soon you'll be telling your father how to run the farm. He already is. And who are you? <laughs> Oh, I bet you're excited to have another month off from school. Of course. We're going to have loads of fun this year. Come on in and eat. Oh, you're too beautiful. <laughs> Challenge. Fix your sights on her. Yeah, she won't want one. Of course she won't. She has wanted one for years, but we're gonna change that. Like I said, a little, little challenge. I have got a beautiful Christmas tree for you this year. Hi, hi. Welcome back. Stars in the branches, right? <laughs> no, 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 not star, stardust. Oh, right. I've got a white fur right here, just like the ones you used to buy. Sorry. This is the year I sell you a tree. No, it really isn't. Yeah. Told you. Dad, there's a man that just bought some roasted chestnuts. Promise you. Well, the day we can't sell a Christmas tree to a guy buying chestnuts is the day we're out of business. just came up here. You did some good work today. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna hang up here for a bit. Try some time exposures. Oh, okay. All right. So, I might be a while. Well, 
Make sure you get some rest. Okay, Dad. See you in the morning. All right. Morning, son. Sit down, Danny. How about some eggs? Ooh, uh, thanks, but I thought I'd take a walk around. Now? Yeah, it's for a little bit. Sit down and eat. We've got setup to do. We'll talk about time off later. Well, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Here you go. Where's Denny? Well, he said he'd be back. Back from where? What does that mean? I don't know. He went off that way. Well, how long ago was that? We were busy. At 10. I mean, is it New York or is it Disneyland? <laughs> First time here? Yeah, it's something I didn't expect, you know? Yeah. She's pretty special. Stick around. Got some nice views from up in the tower. Okay. I'm Danny. Bill. Nice to meet you, Bill. Nice to meet you, too. Well, maybe you could show me around or something? I'd be happy to. Just give me a few minutes to finish up here. Business going. Uh, that was really taken in 1868? Yes. I love these old shots. They're made from glass plates. They're amazing. <laughs> I feel the same way. I think it'd be so cool to work here. <laughs> to um to get a job in photography, do you have to go to college? It helps. Are you planning to become a photographer? Oh, man, that's, that's like a dream. Well, have you ever taken a class? No, but. I do shoot all the time. Wow, yeah. a Leica. It's my mom's. She gave it to me when I was 10. Check these out. Check these. Mm hmm. Back home. I mean, they're just. Yeah. They're great. Uh, so, uh, this is Clement Clark Moore. He wrote The Night Before Christmas. He did. It was called A Visit from St. Nicholas originally. He wrote it on a sleigh ride home from Greenwich Village on Christmas Eve of 1822.
I, I took down with a slow shutter speed. Yeah, you see. It really works. Are you sure that's right? Hey. How's the math going? You are in trouble. Did you see Dad? He's busy with the customer. He didn't see me. He was asking for you. Where have you been? <laughs> this is the most incredible city. I, I mean, <clears throat> the energy, the, the colors, the, the people, the movement. I mean, everywhere. Perhaps you should go out and see if your father needs any help. Never mind. I may do without him. down to Charlie's Tavern for drinks. Want to come? Oh, I'm taking some work home tonight. Thanks so much, though. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye. You're back? Yeah, I had to get one more look. When do you head home? In a couple days. You know, I think that's the same street where we sell our trees. That's the same building. It is. Do they still take these photographs? Not often. It's a very fragile process. You know, if you're really interested in this, you should definitely check out some of the photography schools here in New York. Well, have you ever been to Parsons? I'd never get in. Are you kidding? With the photographs you showed me, you'd have an excellent chance. Really? Absolutely. As an artist, you should never doubt yourself. Okay. There you go, 
grandfather, our last tree at a bargain price. God bless you. I have to say, I've got a real knack for waiting for the last possible moment. What can I say? New York's an expensive place. You're gonna take your bargains where you can find them. <laughs> I thought we agreed no presents. It's not much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> See you next year. Yeah. Well, that's it. It's early. Can we still go see a Broadway show? Oh, gosh, yeah, I don't know about that. Please. Wait a minute. What are these? When did you get these? Uh, I've got my ways. <laughs> All right, it starts at 8, so let's go get Miss Quinn. Come on, Danny. Uh, I think I'm tired out. Come on, it'll be fun. I just don't feel like going. Your sister has been looking forward to this since she got here. Now, let's not disappoint her. Let's go. You go. This is to celebrate all of our hard work. You deserve this just as much as anybody. Now look, we'll go out tonight. And then tomorrow, we'll have Christmas dinner with Mrs. Quinn. We'll pack up and we'll head home. Dad. I'm not going home with you and Bridget. What do you mean you're not coming home with us? I'm gonna stay here. Would you just stop it here? Bridget, hold on. Look, I mean it. I'm gonna find a job and, and make my way. Oh, you're gonna find a job and make your way. I can't talk to you about it. That's right, because it's nonsense. You know, you taught me not to waste time talking when there's work to be done. Hey, you are not going anywhere, young man. Me, Dad. You're 16 years old. This is New York City. Now come here. What do you think? Danny, go. Stop it. Danny, stop. Danny, Danny, please stop it. What's happening? Come Mr. Burn. Danny. 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 Get that kid. Danny. Hey, stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Danny. You're not going anywhere. What's going on here? It's my son. He's trying to run away. He's just a kid. Whatever you know. I, 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 it was an accident. Yeah, it didn't play that way from the street. Did you see what happened? Danny didn't want to go home. I lost him. I wouldn't worry about it. Once he calms down, he'll be back. Don't worry, sweet. Danny will be back. Officer Rip Collins, please. Dinner's ready. I'll be there in a minute, hon. Collins. Rip, it's Christy Byrne. Hey, Christy. Good to hear from you. How are things? Uh, good. Good. Uh, I thought I'd let you know I'm heading down there Monday. Any, uh, any news? Christy. I know that you said that you'd call, but... Yeah, I know. It's been a few months since you've been down here. I just haven't heard anything new. If we haven't heard anything, then we have to go under the assumption that Danny's all right, wherever he is. Right, okay, yeah. Well, thanks, and uh, I'll see you when I get down there. Sure thing. I need that chicken you like.
You ready? Delicious as ever. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. Well, it's, it's good to be here. And how are you? Fine. Go on now, eat. Have you heard anything? Well, we will. I almost didn't recognize you. I know, it's been a while. We'd love to have you back. Thank you. <laughs> Even if it's just for a visit. Yeah, we got room for a bunch more. Okay, here you go. Okay. All right. You okay up there, Bridget? Oh, you are too good. I'm glad you noticed. Well, there he is again. Starts earlier every year. Yeah, look after Thanksgiving. All I can think about when I see him is here we go again. Christmas take a drop from here on out. Hmm, that's not what I think about. What do you mean? Just try to picture him chopping down one tree. Stop it. It doesn't hurt to look, honey. The guy's a jerk. Well, I know that. What's the harm in looking? Okay, I gotta get to work. Hey, this look up promo thing's really taking off, isn't it? The last three have all gotten a ton of responses for the newspaper. Everyone seems to think they know where the statues are. Where's this one? You'll have to look up, won't you? See how the branches glisten? That's the Cape Breton salt spray. No, thank you. Sometimes starlight gets caught in the branches. I thought it was stardust. Uh, yes, yes it is, it is. But when the starlight reflects off the stardust, that's, that's when it really, uh, really shines. Oh, it's a delicate distinction, I guess. Well, I'm glad you remembered. Don't think I've forgotten that beautiful smile of yours. You were once one of the most prized customers. One of these years, I'm gonna celebrate winning you back. Rip, good to see you. How was your trip down? Oh, it was, it was fine. So, you got anything new for me? I really just came down to see how you're doing. Oh. I'm okay. should read silver bells like the song 
This is the one. I want to put this on banners all over town, advertising the exhibit. Okay. Of course, we should send it to the post. I already have. I think we should give the photographer a bonus out of the exhibit fund. Dad, can I um have a private word with you about this lookup project? If it involves a lookup project, then it involves Catherine, too. Did you see the latest? Yeah, terrific. Look, uh, there's a group demonstrating outside the Driscoll building this morning. They're protesting the removal of some winged lion on the top floor. <laughs> Dad, we have $5 million tied up in that redevelopment. I'm, I'm sorry, I said I'm not trying to lose your money. I'm just trying to do some good. <laughs> well, your project is not doing us any good. New Yorkers need to start looking up again. There's a world of architectural wonders right over their heads, and they don't even notice it. Well, I wish you'd discuss this ridiculous cross-promotion in the post before you just went ahead and did it. It's a novelty, which is catching on, by the way. Well, let's just keep in mind that our real estate business pays for your art endeavors. Oh, don't worry. You're doing a great job. Good night, love. Daddy, are you going out now? I may go out for a little while, yeah. Will we ever see Danny again? If I have anything to say about it, we will. You leave the worrying to me. You get some rest. I'll see you in the morning. Daddy, if we do see Danny again, what are you going to do to him? What am I going to do to him? Are you going to hurt him? <sighs> of course not. I want him back. Same as you. Good night, Dad. Good night, love. Is your soul out there? Oh, that'll hit the spot. Please come back at a reasonable hour. We can't have you out there all night. Yes, Mrs. Quinn. Now, don't humor me. I'm serious. Yes, Mrs. Quinn. I miss him, too, you know. Looking for someone, my son. His uh, name is Daniel Byrne. He's 17 years old. I was wondering if you could take a. No. Are you sure? If you wouldn't mind just giving a good look at that photo, I'm gonna look at the picture again. I. Gone to bed. Wasn't tired. Are you all right, darling? You can tell me anything, you know. 
It's okay to be worried. I know you're concerned about your brother and your dad. We always did everything together. Now it's just me and dad pretending all the time that everything's okay. I've been around long enough to know that these things have a way of working out. Sometimes I really wish Mom was here. Oh, darling, I know. She was a wonderful woman. How could she not be with such a smart, lovely daughter? She always knew the right thing to do. So does your dad. Maybe he'll have some luck tonight. Excuse me, I'm, I'm looking for my son. Perhaps you could take a look at the picture. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, I'm looking for my son. Uh, I don't know. He's, he's 17. He, this, this was taken a year ago. Perhaps you no. know. Maybe you've seen him around here somewhere. No. some space and come back when I can get some help bringing it in. I can help. Oh, well, thanks, officer, but it's... Rip. Name's Rip. Well, you don't have to go out of your way. I don't mind. All right, thanks. Um, just give me one second and I'll make some space. You know her? Yeah, just to say hi. Oh, uh, desk sergeant said he called last night. Yeah, remember I told you about that postcard that Danny sent me this summer, the one of the Brooklyn Bridge? Sure. I was over there last night, and they got these shops down there that sell postcards of the bridge. Here's the address of one of them that looks like it sells the exact same card. Maybe you could go over there during the day and show them that picture of Danny I gave you. I don't know, maybe, maybe he bought it from there. Maybe, maybe they remember him. I'm not trying to tell you how to do, do your job. They sell those cards at every souvenir shop in Manhattan. I know, I know, but uh, this card is... Uh... So I've got to go on. Christy, um... I can just feel them walking around down there by the bridge, you know? It's all lit up at night. The, the lights, they're like stars. I mean, that's what, that's what Danny must have thought. He must miss the, the nighttime skies of home. And he'd feel comfortable being near the water. And... Christy, uh, we're doing everything we can. I know. This poster is perfect. We need these on every lamppost tomorrow. Did you see the picture in the paper today? Oh, yeah, it looks great. 
By the way, where are the bells? I have to ask the photographer. Well, I'll find out. The Post has promised to run the answer on Christmas if nobody gets it by midnight Christmas Eve. Okay. Dad, listen, um, I gotta go over to the Hudson site. I'm never gonna make the show tonight. Why don't you and Sarah and the kids go have a good time? Well, can't you do that tomorrow? I'm swamped. The curtain's at eight. Well, I gotta scram. Looks like I'm taking my grandchildren to see the Nutcracker tonight. Don't work too late. I won't. This. More money. Who for? A bonus for the picture of the bells. They're going up all over town. And did you see the paper today? Yeah, yeah, I had a good feeling about that one. So where are they, by the way? The newspaper's been asking. Um, I think you know. I don't. You never told me. Well, have you tried looking up? Cute. <laughs> Danny, Mr. Rhinebeck is going to ask me again. I'm going to have to tell him something. He really loves your work, you know. Really? I wish you'd let me tell him about you. No, no, you promised no one would know. But it could be an opportunity. Yeah, an opportunity for my dad to find me. At some point, you're gonna have to let people know. <sighs> okay, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. When's the last time you had anything to eat? I'm fine. <sighs> Look, I, I found out they're holding a GED test in mid-January at PS 652. Now, do you think I could use the upstairs library to study for it? You have to be out before 7 in the morning. Okay. Uh, there is one more thing. Do you think you could fix it so I could see my sister? You know, without my dad finding out about it. It won't be long. Yes, sir. Thinking about that tree? Uh, no, but I can't help thinking about you out here in the cold. I thought you might like some hot coffee. Oh, gee, that's uh, thanks. It's funny, you know, we've seen each other around for years, and yet we don't know each other's. Uh, I'm, I'm Christopher Byrne, Christy. Catherine O'Mara. Oh, that's a nice Irish name. Well, it was my husband's, but I was O'Doul before Brian and I got married. I haven't seen uh, Brian in a while. He passed away three years ago, almost to the day. It's already here that I lost my wife to cancer four years ago. I came to ask for something. Mm, well, you brought the good coffee, so <laughs> the answer is yes. 
<laughs> well, my friend Lizzie and I, you know Lizzie? Oh, yeah, she Liz. Exactly. Well, we were going to take her daughter Rose ice skating, and I was wondering if your little girl... Bridget? Bridget would like to come with us. Uh, well, that's very thoughtful of you, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. What's going on, Daddy? Catherine here has invited you to go ice skating. Can I? Well, I guess you promise to be careful. Of course. Wonderful. We'll meet outside Shayla's at 6.30. She'll be there. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Hey, Danny. Hi, Bill. Pretty cold, huh? Sure is. Thanks for letting me crash. Do me a favor, though, would you? I'll leave this window unlocked for you when I can. Be sure to shut it so it looks closed. Boss noticed it the other day. Sorry, I'll make sure no one sees anything. Wouldn't you rather go skating with me, maybe later next week? Dad. I think Miss Quinn is planning a special meal. Oh, it'll wait until she gets back. She'll be fine. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna tag along. What about the stand? Oh, business has been lousy all day. Come on. It'll be fun. away from her father. He invited himself. What could I do? What if he sees Danny? For all I know, Danny's not going to show up then. <laughs> all right, see if this is tight enough. Hey. Your daughter's terrific. Yeah, she's great. I only wish I could make things a little easier for her. Is it hard for you to be in New York? Because of my son? You don't know what it's like to realize you've pushed the person you love the most away from you. I've been back down here half a dozen times this year looking for him and I... I don't even know if he's alive. Oh, but he is. Oh, I, I pray that you're right. If he weren't, you'd know. When someone you love dies... Part of your heart dies. You can't quite believe you can go on breathing. I'm sorry that you know that. I'm sorry, too. About Danny. All right, I'll take you around. Dad, I'm going myself. You don't want to take you around? I'm too old. What was I thinking? I'm not too old. You can take me around. Sounds like a great idea. for you every night. He doesn't sleep, he cries. That doesn't cry. Not when he thinks anyone's looking. He 
Looks like he's having a blast. How's the farm? You're not there. I miss you. Come back. I can't do that. Where do you sleep? Lots of places. How do you eat? I do okay. You know, I make a little money. Let me just tell Dad that you're here. No. Please, Bridget, I'll, I'll come see you again, Mrs. Quince. When? When I can. But only if you promise not to tell Dad that you saw me. Ah, come on, you've got to promise. I promise. Good a time as I am. I love you, Daddy. Thanks so much for inviting me today. Yeah, it was fun. Maybe we can do something else this week. You know, hang out. Absolutely. That'd be great. I'm in St. Lucie's car on Sundays. You should come hear us. We could do something afterwards. Hey, Dad. Can we go to church on Sunday and hear Rose sing? I don't know, honey. Sunday is one of our busiest days. Please. We're practicing tomorrow morning. You can come then. Rose, sweetheart, Mr. Burns busy with his business. No, no, no. T tomorrow will be OK. What time? Eight. Oh, we can do that. How about you, Catherine? What do you say? Would you like to come? Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't think I can. I like this one. What's going on around here? We're working. Ah. Friday night, I came back to the office just past 10. And I did something you might approve of, Dad. I looked up. You did? The library light was on. Well, that must have been me. I was working late. Logbook says you signed out a little before 8. I must have left the lights on. Sorry, I won't do it again. Interesting thing is, when I got up here, I could see they were still on from the hallway. But by the time I came around through your office, the lights had shut off, seemingly all by themselves. Perhaps you were wrong. Except a computer was left on. I must have neglected to turn it off. <laughs> uh, son, look at these images. Aren't they wonderful? Which one do you think? best epitomizes what we're trying to do for the city. I don't know, Dad. What are you trying to do? Well, bring out the news that life is short and we waste too much of it rushing around. I think we should all be a little bit more concerned with security around here. Nightly ritual, I'm looking for my boy. Uh, it must seem crazy. Try to find him in a big city like this, but I, I gotta try. When my wife was dying, I made a promise to her I'd watch over the kids. I wonder what she'd think if she saw me now. I'm so sorry, but I'm sure she'd know you're doing everything you can for them. Before Brian died, he promised me he'd be with me forever. I think about that all the time. And I guess deep down, I know that he is here with me. Just not the way I'd like him to be. Don't give up hope on Danny. Thank you. All right, everybody, let's go, let's go. Concert positions, please. 
Christmas is almost here. We don't have much rehearsal time left. Come on. Step up. Nice. Mom. Becky, stand next to Jean. What time is it? Good. Okay, eyes forward. I want you to look don't at me. Don't worry. I'm sure right they'll be now. here in a second, okay? It's good. Come on. Concert pitch, please. you at Rose's rehearsal yesterday. I know. She has a wonderful voice, doesn't she? She was wonderful. She was so kind to invite Bridget along the other day and tolerated my intrusion. I thought I'd reciprocate and invite you to dinner. Oh. I think it'd make Bridget really happy. Yeah, uh, we were going to go to Chinatown. You see? Well, I wouldn't want to disappoint Bridget. Good. It's set then. 8.30? All right. I'll see you then. I've got to tell him the truth. Ice skating was that good, huh? He minded man about his own son. And how would you feel if Rose went missing for a year? I'd be out of my mind. What about Danny? You know, what about what he wants? How receptive is he going to be if you go confess to his dad? I know, but his dad is desperate to find him. Hey, homework time. Okay. See you later then. Danny? Danny! Danny! Son! Danny! What's going on? I don't know. Christy! What happened? I saw him. This is his hat. It fell off his head. He doesn't want to see me. Come with me. baby, he had a fever, and the doctors didn't know what was causing it, so they kept him at the hospital. And that night, I went home, I saw his teddy bear. I never thought I'd see him again. And this teddy bear was all to have of him.
Catherine. There's something I have to tell you. The label. CL? Shay Liz. What? Lizzie buys old hats at auctions and flea markets. She refurbishes them and then puts in her label before she puts them back up for sale. So Danny bought this hat from your friend? Maybe she knows something about where he is. Let's call her. She gave it to him. But she would have told me or told you and you would have told me. He asked us not to. I've seen him. You've seen him? What? Why didn't you say something? Where is he? I don't know. Where did you see him? At... Well, at the museum. Sometimes he just shows up. Sometimes? How many times? On occasion, I give him odd jobs. Where is he staying? I told you, I, I don't is know. Is he all right? Yes. I've helped him whenever I could. Why didn't you tell me this before? He didn't want me to. He didn't want you to. He's a kid. He's living on the street. I'm his father. Lizzie, listen, please. Do me the kindness next time of telling me if he shows up. I just want to help. Christy. Looks nice. Doesn't it? Yeah. Thanks again for helping me put it up, officer. Officer? Oh, I was hoping you'd at least remember my name. Oh, who says I didn't? Well, it's, uh, it's not officer. Okay, Rip. Uh, much better. <laughs> you can call me Lizzie. Just hoping I'd be the case. Uh, could you, could you excuse me for one yeah, second? Yeah, of course, Lizzie. Officer Rip. Christy. Hey, Christy. What's happening? We need to talk. Where have you been? There's nobody watching the stand. Everything all right? <sighs> Lost my cash box. Old day's earnings. How long ago? I don't know. Well, how long did you leave it unattended? I don't know, about a half an hour. I was standing right here. I saw Danny. You saw Danny? He was watching me. I took off the moment I recognized him. I ran down the street and I, I, I couldn't catch him. Okay, and now your cash box is missing. Danny didn't do this. Sure. He couldn't have. But he was here. Yeah, well, I know, but... And he ran away? Danny is no thief. Okay, look, I'm, I'm not saying that he took it. But if we report the theft, and him as a suspect, I can put out an APB on him. That way it's not just me stealing odd hours looking for him. Okay. Are you working late again tonight? Oh, probably. A word to the wise. Yes. If the library lights are on tonight, make sure you haven't signed out yet. Good night. Mr. Rhinebeck. That's all I'm going to say on the subject. Out of here tonight?
One of my bosses saw the light and he left the computer on. Well, I'll only use the table lamps and I'll make sure I turn off the computer. Danny, I can't afford to lose my job. Mm, that's okay. Yeah, I'll go then. You're not going anywhere. Would you sit down? Here's the deal. Study and we'll stay here tonight, but in the morning you and I are gonna go to your father. Together. I'll take your side, you and me against him, if it comes down to it. Do we have a deal? Would you please put down the picture? I'm talking to you, Danny. You got married at St. Lucy's. Yes, I did. Looks like it was a beautiful wedding. The most beautiful day of my life. I still miss my mom, too. Then just think about how much your father is missing you. Can I go and study now? Intruder that just left my building. Um, yeah, he's on the uh, the M10 bus. He's headed uptown. I'm um, I'm getting in a cab right now, following him. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm midtown. What are you doing up? Can't sleep. Kiddo. I saw him today. Really? He was watching us from across the street. And when I saw him, he ran away. And then later, I found the cash box was missing. The police are looking for him now. For Danny? Yeah. He didn't take it. I hope you're right. He didn't take it. I did. It's under my bed. Bridget. I wanted to give it to him so he could eat better. Don't you know I would give you anything you asked for that you don't have to steal? I saw him and he looked really bad. You saw him too? Only when I skated. 
That was days ago. Why didn't you tell me this? He made me promise. I'm sorry. This way, officer. There he is up there. Yeah, I see him. Careful, son. <laughs> just come back down. We just want to talk to you. <laughs> Yes. Hello, ma'am. Uh, is Christy Byrne here? Oh, yes. Please come in. Mr. Byrne! Hey, Rip. I've been meaning to call you. I, I found my cash boxes here all along. Uh, I have some news. What is it? Uh, two officers followed a thief who matches Danny's description into Central Park. Now, apparently, the boy tried to get away by scaling to the roof of the Belvedere Castle. Is he okay? He fell off the roof and into a frozen pond about 40 feet below. He fell through the ice. But they can't tell if he got out or if he's still under there. Does this belong to your boy? Yeah. That's Danny's. Lawrence, what are you doing here? Are, are you aware one of our museum's cameras has been stolen? I just called my father. He's on his way. How did you get that? Did you know the boy who had this? He didn't steal it. His name is Danny, and I loaned it to him. I thought so. The camera you are calling stolen took the picture of the silver bells. Is that true? Yes. He's the one that took the picture of the silver bell? Among others. He may be dead. He just took a 40-foot drop off the top of Belvedere Castle in Central Park. Danny? I, I just came from there. They don't think he could have survived it. Oh, no. no. Where are you going? I forgot to get to his phone. You don't get a say. Give me your coat. Turn up. Stay warm. No, don't, don't worry, son. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. She's getting help. Please 
don't tell. Danny, it's what's right. I'm gonna head up to the park. Didn't the officer want you to stay here? I know I could be helping with the search. I just can't sit here. If Rip calls, just call my cell phone right away. Hello? Is Christy Byrne there, please? He is. He's right here. This is Christy. Christy. Catherine, can I call you back? Uh, I can't talk right now. It's about Danny. He's here with me at the hospital. Is he okay? He's under observation. The boy's father is here. I'll tell the doctor. He's alive. Mr. Byrne. Yeah, that's me. That's me. I've stitched a rather severe cut on your son's head. He's got a concussion. How bad is it? Well, he's also recovering from hypothermia. I want to keep him under observation for a while, but it looks like he got here in time. He's okay? We'll know a little more tomorrow. You should go home and get some sleep. It might be a while before he's conscious. I'm not leaving this hospital without him. I just want to take my son home. We'll keep you informed. I know it's none of my business. When have you let that stop you? You shouldn't force Danny to go back with you if he isn't ready. Yeah, you're right. It's much better on the street for him. That's not what I mean. He wants to go to college. He's studying for the GED right now so he can do that. He's got talent, Christy. You shouldn't deny him the opportunity. Why doesn't he want what he's got? I spent my whole life building his future, and the only thing in this life I can give him is my farm. And that's a generous gift. You can give him something else. You can admire and encourage his work. His work? Why can't his work be with me? Have you ever really looked at his pictures? Sure, he takes, he takes, he takes good pictures. He takes pictures well enough to make a good living in it. Please listen to his side. Of course I will. You think I'm some sort of monster? I don't. I don't. I appreciate everything you've done for him. But we don't need you here now. I need to be the one to see him. Alone. Without you. I get it. Please, God, look after Danny. Don't make a big deal out of this. All I can say is welcome back.
Matt. Is there anything on the boy? Still in intensive care from what I've heard. But he's going to be OK, right? I hope. Nobody said it for sure. I'm planning on heading over there. I am. Um, I want you to know I had the charges against him dropped. Thank you. I know that picture he took means a lot to you. So do you, son. Dad, do you remember my first big deal? Morningdale Project, right? That's right. I was so excited when that all came together. I remember waking up the next morning and looking at myself in the mirror, face full of shaving cream, and saying to myself, this will grab the old man's attention. What old man? I thought you'd finally be impressed with me. Son, I have always been impressed with you. Hey, Dad, did you think about offering a, a job to your young photographer? I think it's a great idea. Mr. Byrne, Sylvester Rhinebeck. As in Rhinebeck Tower? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I did build that tower. It was a long time ago. Now I'm busy hanging your son's photos in our museum. You're Catherine's boss. Well, I try not to boss her around too much. Have you seen him? No, he hasn't woken up yet. Well, when he does, uh, I want to offer him a job helping at the museum. Uh, I appreciate everything you've done for him. Really. I don't, I don't think. Your son has a very special gift. Photography is an art, and art inspires us to build a better world. We all need it. I know I need it. It's something people need every bit as much as Christmas trees. I understand that. It's just not something I can help him with. I wish I could uh, give him something. You can give him the one thing that can only come from you. What's that? Mr. Byrne? Your blessing. with you. Thought I'd never see it again. I figured you might miss it. And you took care of it for me. Of course. We'd have taken care of a lot more. It... No. No, you try to stop me. Couldn't we have talked about this? Maybe we could have figured out a way for you to go to college if that's what you wanted. That was never the problem. I should have listened to you more. I had dreams for your future. Problem was, they weren't yours. I love this city, Dad. You know, I, I can be me here. And I can make it here, I know it. You know, college is just the starting point. I see. We'll get you out of this hospital. We'll fix up your old room at Mrs. Quinn's, the one with the fireplace. You'll recover, and Bridget and I 
will not leave New York until we help you pass that test. And next Christmas when you and Bridget come back, I promise I'll be here to help. <laughs> He's going to be all right. He's going to be fine. <laughs> Can you see him? You bet. There you go, little Nova Scotia starlight captured in your own home. Chrissy. Oh, officer. A white spruce for the station <laughs> house, perhaps? Yeah, all right, give it a rest. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, what do you think of Lizzie? Of her shop? Uh, no, I mean her. I think that you like her. She asked me to come by her friend Catherine's place tonight for Christmas Eve dinner. Just having a few people over. It's nice. And I guess it wouldn't hurt to pop by. So, what do you think? What do I think? You want to go? Well, I wasn't invited. You should go. All right. Hey, Rip. Just want to tell you, you've been uh, an incredible friend. I couldn't have made it through the year without your help and support. Merry Christmas, Chris. Merry Christmas. Got a guy at the chestnut stand. Promising. Well, the day we can't sell a Christmas tree to a guy who smells the chestnuts, well, that's the day we're out of business. Right, Dad? You got that right. Here comes the priest from St. Lucy's. I think I can handle this one. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. Merry Christmas, Father. Perfect timing as usual. Merry Christmas to you. We got a nice white spruce here with your name on it. That's a magnificent tree. This tree is lit from within. Well, that's because you put little lights on it. Well, there are no lights on this tree, Father. It's glowing. Well, the needles on that white spruce are covered all year by Cape Breton salt spray. Ah, uh, how enchanting. Well, they say that starlight gets caught in the branches. I'll take it for $25. <laughs> with all respect, Father, it's an underdollar tree. <laughs> How about it's on us? Oh, no, 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 I couldn't do that. Merry Christmas, Father. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Last tree. This is the moment where it all came apart last year. I'm sorry about all that. Well, I'm sorry you felt the need. You're my son, and you're free to roam the earth if it so calls you. As long as you let me know you're all right. Yeah, well, uh, I am now. Dad, I think you forgot there's still one more tree. I was holding that one back. Ooh, you mean for Catherine? Why don't we take it to her? Well, she's having people over for the holiday. It wouldn't be right if I barged in like that. Dad, it's Christmas Eve. Catherine, the post needs an answer. If nobody calls in by midnight with a location of the Silver Bells, they have to put it in tomorrow's paper. You have to talk to this fellow from the newspaper, Catherine. But I'm throwing a party my first in years. But you haven't told me where the Silver Bells are. Because I don't know. You never got an answer out of him? He kept saying I would figure it out on my own. And have you? Surprise! Merry Christmas. We decided you could use a tree this year. Please, come in, join the party. 
Bruce, I'll have you know, yours for a song. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. the silver bells. Mrs. O'Mara is going to make that announcement. But they have to know tonight before midnight. We've got time. Actually, my father's going to be the one to tell her. I don't know. How would I know? Well, now I have been entrusted with the secret of the silver bells. Catherine must agree to come with me. Won't take long. I can take over here. Well, just go. <laughs> Where are you taking me? Oh, not far. <clears throat> I've been hoping that you'd come by. I didn't think you wanted to see me. Well, I didn't first. But when I thought about what shape my son would have been in without your help, I uh, realized you were sent into my life for a reason. What I really needed was an angel. What's going to happen with Danny? Well, he's decided to stay. Mrs. Quinn's gonna rent him a room. If your boss's job offer still stands. And what about you, Christy? Well, I'm staying to help him study for the GED. And I guess I'm uh, going back to tend to my trees. Unless... Silver Bells. 